When it comes to the bad guy in movies, there seems to be this eternal debate over which kind is the best. Because some say that the villain being pure evil is better, while others feel that a more sympathetic take on the bad guy tells a more effective story. But as I got into in my video on sympathetic villains, which you can find a link in the description to, what most people seem to forget is that people in the real world can have extremely petty or stupid reasons for doing horrible things, and that not everybody who commits evil has a sympathetic reason for doing so. But to take it a step further, what some people also seem to forget sometimes is that just because a villain is evil and does evil things simply because they want to, doesn't mean they don't have a reason for doing it. Because I'll freely admit, a bad guy doing things simply because they want to do evil is not realistic most of the time. However, many villains that have been given that label honestly don't deserve it. Because they often do have a reason beyond the fact that it's evil. I mean, I'm not saying it has to be a good reason, just that it's usually not evil just for evil's sake. And today, I'd like to demonstrate this by taking a look at two of the most iconic comic book villains in history and comparing them to each other, with that being Lex Luthor and the Joker. And there will be spoilers for a couple of their respective movie adaptations ahead. So in case there's something of theirs you've been meaning to see, you might just want to be on the lookout. Okay, so to get right into it, for many people, Lex Luthor probably seems like a textbook example of a villain who's evil just for the sake of it. After all... Somebody's got to have the guts to challenge Superman, and it makes sense that a man who's insanely rich would have the greatest number of resources to actually be considered a threat to him. But what most people don't take into account here is, Lex Luthor doesn't fight Superman just for the heck of it. He doesn't constantly try to kill him just because he's bored and has nothing better to do. Instead, it all goes back to what I said in my video on Megamind, which you can also find the link in the description too. Which is that when you really look at it, beating Superman is actually only the first step in Lex Luthor's plans. His actual goals involve making as much money as possible and maybe even ruling the world. And the only reason he wants to stop Superman is because he prevents him from achieving his actual goals. To put it simply, Lex Luthor is constantly trying to kill Superman so he can complete his actual goals. And that destroying him isn't the goal in and of itself. Frankly, getting rid of Superman is only a means to an end for him. And if he were to, for example, just fly off the planet one day and never return, Luther would simply go ahead with completing his actual goals and rejoice that he no longer has to deal with such a powerful enemy. Now, is all of this to say that Lex Luthor doesn't hold a special contempt or hatred for Superman specifically? No, absolutely not. Because it's a well-known fact that Luthor generally comes to despise Superman after being stopped by him one too many times, and defeating him does become something of a personal matter for him. And there's also the fact that he actually envies Superman because he has all the physical advantages he can never have, and thus also wants to kill him for that reason as well. It's just that it never becomes his only goal. Once again, if Superman were to just disappear, he might be a bit annoyed that he never got to personally kill him, but that wouldn't stop him from going ahead with his plans or enjoying his subsequent victories. What I'm trying to say here is, 
Lex Luthor doesn't fight Superman just because. He doesn't want to kill him simply because he's a superhero. He actually has a reason for wanting him out of the way so badly, since he has actual goals that he can't accomplish until Superman is no longer trying to stop him. Now, some might argue that even if he does oppose Superman for reasons other than just to be evil, his given motivations still aren't exactly the most original or complex either. But again, consider the type of people that could go up against somebody like Superman and actually be seen as a threat, and an insanely rich man with delusions of grandeur and a desire for extreme power does fit the bill pretty well. My point is, only somebody like Lex Luthor would make sense as an enemy for Superman, both because he has access to virtually limitless resources and is arrogant enough to think that he can take him on. Now, sure, some could still argue that he could have a better motivation than just wanting him out of the way and enact generic villain plots, but that doesn't change the fact that his given goals and motivations make sense. He is the extreme selfish to Superman's extreme selflessness, the yin to his yang, if you will. So just being an extremely rich, greedy, and power-hungry man does form the basis for the kinds of wants and desires a character like him should have. But by contrast, the Joker can be considered a lot closer to the doing evil things just for the sake of it molding. Because ultimately his goals seem to center a lot more around him getting his sick kicks rather than anything tangible. And I'm not even going to argue that point. No matter which interpretation of the Joker one looks at, his goals center a lot more on playing mind games and indulging in his sick forms of hedonism, terrorizing people pretty much just because he can. But even then, it's not so much that he's evil and does evil things just for the sake of it, but that it's more a byproduct of extreme insanity on his part because that is the other consistent across all interpretations of the character, the fact that he has totally lost his mind. And because he's so cracked in the head, it makes sense that he would behave like a complete lunatic. Because, let's face it, when a person's lost their sanity, their motivations and reasons for doing things can often become extremely mangled and unintelligible. But there's also his whole rivalry with Batman. And while it's true that he seems to harass him and push him to his limits simply because he wants to, even then he has goals beyond defeating him. Because the Joker's two biggest hobbies are robbing places for money so that he can indulge in his hedonism and playing mind games with people. To the Joker, Life is just one big, cruel, sick joke, and it's his job to make the punchline as funny as possible. And to him, the best ways to do that involve trying to break people and make them as crazy and evil as he is. And because Batman is always trying to stop him and never succumbs to his tricks no matter what, that makes him a very interesting and unique challenge. But if Batman were to die, by his hand or otherwise, he wouldn't lose his quote-unquote purpose in life. Instead, he'd just move on to tormenting other people. Sure, maybe it wouldn't be as fun, but his goals don't stop at terrorizing Batman specifically. Because again, He'll happily torment anybody that puts up a fight against him. And there's also his mindless hedonism to consider. And this is true even in the most extreme of examples. For instance, in The Dark Knight, 
He repeatedly says he doesn't want to kill Batman or see him die because he views him as his opposite and most challenging opponent. Because in this iteration, the Joker's one and only goal is to prove that everybody can be broken, pushed to insanity, and become just as bad as him. And to that end, Batman proves to be his most difficult obstacle, which is why he loves messing with him so much. Because he wants to see how far he'll have to take it before Batman finally snaps. And he doesn't care if it involves him personally dying to do it. But that being said, suppose Batman were to die before the Dark Knight was over. Would he really give up his ignoble crusade and sob at the fact that his most worthy opponent was dead? No. He'd probably just be aggravated for a little while and then start messing with everybody else. Or go back to ripping off mob dealers at worst. Because again, ultimately his goal is to corrupt everyone and bring them down to his level. So even if Batman proved to be his most fun and worthy effort, his death wouldn't suddenly mean he would stop trying to achieve that goal. And the same goes for any other interpretation of him as well, especially the ones that are just as prone to hedonism as they are mind games. Batman would be a great loss to him, most definitely, but he wouldn't suddenly feel he didn't have a purpose or give up his life of crime. Maybe it wouldn't be quite as fun for him for a little while, but he'd continue doing it and still enjoy it quite a lot to boot. My point is, even if they are a lot more intangible and harder to understand, even somebody as crazy as the Joker actually does have goals and plans that don't directly involve his main adversary. Though, sure, due to his insanity, he is in many ways evil just for the sake of being evil, but even that is actually a lot darker and sinister than most people give him credit for, as I just went over. Even lighter depictions of him, such as Tim Burton's Batman, depict him as a maniac who wants to either kill or remake everybody in his own image. Or sometimes both. Now, by now, you might be wondering, what exactly is my point with all of this? That if a villain is well written, they almost never do evil things just for the sake of doing evil things or have their goals simply stop at trying to kill the hero without any thought as to what they'll do next. The only time you'd really see that is in stuff aimed at very small children, or in stories where the villain is completely consumed by revenge. Like in The Wrath of Khan, for example, Khan is absolutely determined to kill Kirk because of their history together. But even he has goals beyond killing him. It's just that his lust for revenge takes top priority. And this was why I singled out Lex Luthor and the Joker. Because many believe the two want to stop their respective heroes just for the heck of it. But as this video has hopefully demonstrated, it actually goes a lot deeper than that in both their cases. And once again, the same applies to many other villains that many are willing to write off as badly written or one note. But as those two villains show, just because a villain's underlying motivation for doing something isn't always apparent doesn't mean they don't have one. Okay, I think I've gone on with this for long enough. So now I'd like to hear your opinions. Do you believe Lex Luthor and the Joker are two excellent examples of villains that appear generic and evil just for the sake of it at first glance, but are actually a lot more than that? Or do you believe no villain who's truly considered good would ever be labeled as evil simply for evil's sake? Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And as always, 
You don't have to agree with anything I said in this video if you don't want to. You are entitled to your own opinion, and if you think I've got it all wrong, that's perfectly okay. And thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to see you all next time.